Hi everyone, Andrew here with my May wrap up. Um, I read, I think, 17 books in total in May, which is really good. There were two plays, one non-fiction and eight e-books, and then the rest of them were normal physical books. The first book I read in the month was a e-book called uh, the, the Girl in Between by Laken Zia Kemp. Now this is a book about a girl named Bryn who suffers from something called uh, Klein-Levin Syndrome, which is when you fall unconscious for no reason at any time. Um, when you're asleep in these states, you're not supposed to have dreams, but she has this dream place that she goes to and it contains everything that she's ever owned or bought. And if you buy something, it will appear in this dream location. Now, the book mainly focuses on her trying to find a cure for this condition because she's supposed to grow out of it as you get older but she's not and her episodes are getting worse they can last anything up to a couple of months when she'll just sleep now one day she's in one of her episodes and suddenly a boy appears in this dream he shouldn't be there because it's the only thing she's ever had bought physical items so she and him start talking and he doesn't remember who he is he doesn't know where he's from or anything or why he's there. So Bryn makes it her mission when she's in her non-dream state to find out who he is. And to be fair, she does. I'm not going to tell you where he is or who he is and what it's about because that would spoil the story. I thought it was a brilliant story. It was well written. I really engaged with the characters. And unfortunately, it's only available as an e-book. But if you can download it, um, do. It's a really good read. So, I mean, it's one of those things some people like, some people don't. So that was the first one. The second one I read is by one of my favourite authors, which is Terry Pratchett, and it's one of his older books, and it is The Amazing Maurice and His Educated Rodents, which is a retelling of The Pied Piper of Hamelin on Discworld. Now, I'm a huge Terry Pratchett fan. I've got pretty much every single Discworld book. I think I'm only missing one, and that's The Last Hero. Um, been a fan of his for well over 20 years so this is one of the few i hadn't read it's the first discord for younger readers brilliant retelling of the pipe piper and love the ending and it just goes to show that if we all work together no matter our differences what we could achieve so that's basically the moral of the story in this one now the third the third book i read again was a ebook and it was called 1929 by m l gardner it's set during the great depression and it's about how three men lose everything and rebuild their lives with their wives. Um, again, brilliant story. I really enjoyed this. I, it's, and I don't really go for historical fiction that often. But I really, really enjoyed 1929. The villain was good. The characters were great. They were believable. Um, nothing nothing wrong with that at all. Really enjoyed that. And the next book I bought was actually a, uh, read was a non-fiction one that I forgot was non-fiction. And, oops, and that is... Uh, Little Girl Lost, The Life and Hard Times of Judy Garland by Al Oreo. This came out about three or four years after Judy Garland died originally. And Al Oreo himself was only about 23 and he himself has admitted that it is really like a fan magazine type of biography. So yeah, I mean it's a nice biography and it's nice to read the good stories without having all the bad ones mixed in. Um, obviously there were bad things that happened to Judy and she was unreliable at times but it's nice to read the other side of the story which is all the good things that happened and all the achievements that she had. The next book I read was Murder at the 40 foot, 42nd Street Library by Conla Hain. I really wanted to love this book because Murders in Libraries and it was a good book but I felt it could have been so much better. It, there was a lot of it that was just not, didn't flow right, it didn't, it's hard to explain, but there were bits of it that you, you, they could have cut and it wouldn't have matter. And there were some coincidences that were absolutely ridiculous and I felt they were ridiculous. So, but still, it's a nice, easy enough read. There's a lot of characters though, but I, I did enjoy it, but I really wanted to enjoy it more. Uh, the next book I read was another ebook, which was The Witch That Came in the Cold. This was a free um, ebook from NetGalley. Um, basically, The Witch That Came in from the Cold was originally published in weekly parts as a serial, so you'd get one episode every week, and it cost about like 99 pence. This is the whole collection. The whole collection is being released soon as one book. 
um, I'm glad I read the whole thing because I actually loved it. So it's set in the 70s in Prague. It's the height of the Cold War. The KGB and the CIA are fighting it out. But you've also got this undercurrent. There's a lot of magic going on. You've got the, the acolytes of flame and the consortium of ice. And they both want different things. Flame wants to burn the world to, to hell and start again. Ice wants to just keep things ticking over nicely. I really enjoyed this book. I actually found myself talking to the characters so uh, for me to talk to the characters it's got to be a pretty good book so one to check out if you fancy a nice easy spy story with some magical realism the next book was dying to get published by judy fitzwater now this was an ebook and it started off really slowly i didn't think i was going to like it but as the story picked up it got better it's one of those as you read it the story made more sense it got better because you're thinking nobody is going to kill somebody to get published and that's the whole point she doesn't but then somebody gets murdered and they think it's her and she's got to prove her innocence so it did um improve it was a free download i will admit it was free i didn't pay for it i don't think i would have bothered then after that i read dorothy must die by danielle page now again didn't think i was gonna like it i love the wizard of oz both the original book and the film and i thought oh something that messes with oz i'm not gonna like I read Wicked, I did enjoy that, and I, and I started thinking, I hate this thing, I hate this. But Danielle Page is such a good storyteller that the retelling worked. It really, really worked, and I really enjoyed it, and I am now going to be looking to get the next one in the series. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing because of the next book. The next book I read was actually a play um, that I bought, and it's actually called Five Lesbians Eating a Quiche. And I mentioned this before, it's set in 1956. Um, and the Susan B. Anthony Societies for the Sisters of Gertrude Stein are having their annual quiche breakfast. Will they be able to keep their cool when communists threaten the idyllic town? So basically they're having a quiche lunch. They're all lesbians, but they won't admit it. They all come out and then the, the nuclear bomb goes off. There are some very funny bits in this. I laughed reading it and I can imagine it would be hysterical to see this performed. And I think it would work very well in a small studio environment. But yeah, I, I did enjoy it. It's just a bit odd. Um, the next book I read, excuse me, was another ebook from NetGalley, and that was called *The Wrong Kind of Clouds*. And I haven't put it down who wrote it, but it was Amanda Somebody, and I will put that in the notes below. I do apologise. Again, this one was one I thought I'm not going to like this because the main character who gets kidnapped was not likable. I was like, yeah, he deserves it. He's a complete womanizer, gambler, has good points. But he wasn't very good. Again, a lot of coincidences, but there were four plot lines in this which could have gone either way. So out of the four possible reasons for his being kidnapped, you were kept guessing as to which one it would be right till the end. And that was a very, very good end. So it worked out really well, actually, and I did enjoy it. Um, after that, I read the sequel to The Girl in Between, which is The Boy in Her Dreams, or Boy in Her Dreams by Lake and Zia Kemp. This is the sequel. She's awake gone to Germany to try and find a cure for this illness. She knows who the boy is. His name's Roman. I'm not going to tell you how she found him or why he was in her dreams. That you will need to find out by reading the book because it will spoil it. They're in Germany and they find out that she doesn't technically suffer from Klein-Levin syndrome. What it is is she has a magical ability. She's called a dreamer and she can control and change the past and the future. I don't know how this is going to end. I've read the second book. There's one more book in the series and I'm really looking forward to getting that hopefully this month. The next book I read is another non-fiction and oh my god this is a beast of a book. This is, oops I just dropped one. They All Love Jack by Bruce Robinson, Busting the Ripper. It is about Jack the Ripper or not and it's about the various conspiracies around Freemasonry and the Ripper story. Um, it contains his preferred candidate, which is Michael Maybrick. Everybody knows this because it's been everywhere. As you can see, it's a beast of a book. It comes in at over 800 pages. It is really dense. It took me over two months to read this book. But it was a very... He's a very, very good writer, Bruce Robinson. I mean, with Nail and I. He writes so well that you, can, you, do, you do want to just finish it. There's a lot of swearing, he uses it a lot, and he comes across as very, very angry. And rightly so. He's angry at the establishment, he's angry at the, the police force of the time, he's angry at the government of the time. 
um, because basically it was a time when the normal people, the poor, the you and I, were subjugated so the aristocracy could live how they wanted to. Didn't matter what they did, as long as everybody else just kept their place and behaved. A beast of a book, but if you're interested in the Jack the Ripper story and you're interested in a bit of Freemasonry, you might enjoy it. I, I certainly did enjoy it, it was just a bit tough going. Next is the one I dropped on the floor and it's another play and this one is Kinder Transport by Diane Samuels. So this is set in about the 70s and, nine, and the war years uh, and it's basically about how they rescued a lot of Jewish children from Germany just before the outbreak of World War II. It's about a girl named Eve. She um, comes over to England in 1939 and is fostered and uh, as she grows up she becomes anglicised and changes her name to Evelyn. She doesn't want to go and live with her mother, her real mother, when her mother escapes Germany. Um, and it's a juxtaposition between the child Eve and the adult Evelyn and Evelyn's daughter Faith, who discovers that her mother was on the kinder transport and wants to know more about it. But Eve, Evelyn does not want to talk about it. It's really powerful stuff, obviously with the subject. It really is. And I would love to see this performed. It's an absolutely brilliant play. Now, after Kinder Transport, I read Just One Damn Thing After Another by Jodie Taylor. Time Travel and Historians, two of my favourite things in one book. Loved it, read it in a day. Really, really enjoyed it. I am hopefully getting the second one soon. I, I just enjoyed the writing. I liked the characters. <sighs> yeah, mm, yeah, nothing too obvious going to happen. Like the little twist can't wait to, to read the next one. I know there are seven in this series so I'll be getting them all. After that one I read, oh good, another one, The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. Again this was recommended by lots of people on, on booktube um, and I thought I've got to go to see what it's all about. And I read it and oh my god it's so beautiful. It is one of the most beautiful stories I've ever read. I love it. I love the way it's written. Even now, I read this last week, at the beginning of last week, and I'm still thinking about it. I've read other books since, and I'm still coming back to thinking about the relationship in this book between North and Callanish. And, oh, it's just beautiful, and I'm so glad I read it, and I will be reading it again at some point. Finally, two more to go, yay! But uh, last but one was Ready Player One. I was born in the 80s. I recognise a lot of the pop culture references. I would be two, I'm, yeah, I'm two years younger than Halliday would be. So that gives you my age. And yeah, I just loved it. I loved the whole concept of playing the video games. A lot of the video games I've played, the films I've seen, the music I've listened to, in fact, when the songs were mentioned in the book, I just kept singing along with them. I couldn't help myself. It was that good. I loved it. It's one of my favourites. Now, the final book I read this year was another one, this month, was uh, in May, was another one from NetGalley, and this one was called The Curse of the Bridal Chamber by Hunter Murphy. Now, this does not come out until the 15th of September this year. It was a free download for a review. And I've got to be honest, I hate to end on a downer, but I really didn't enjoy it to start with. It felt very, very jarring it, it jumped it, it was like when you're driving and you start to drive and you're kangarooing along it, it was like that um to start with the characters overreact to every single situation there's no there's no calmness at all um and then at the fifth around 50 percent it changed completely it was like it was a totally different writer took over the writing and it flowed so much better and the characters developed there was still a lot I didn't like um, I wanted to slap the two sisters the old ladies I, I did just really irritate me and they're the main characters I did like the relationships between um, uh, Billy and Jackson and Peter Luce and Francis especially those two absolutely lovely beautifully written a lot of the book I think was I could be taken out. It's a very long book and it goes over and over the same subjects a lot and I just felt it was too much and there was a whole scene with this monkey, this baby monkey that um, one of the women kidnapped and took from its family. It didn't need to be there, it was just superfluous to requirement. Um, so that's what I read in June. So I look forward to see in May, we're in June now, in May. I look forward to, to watching your wrap ups for this month. June, I'm on holiday for part of the month, so there will probably be two wrap-ups in June. 
just because I know that when I'm on holiday I'm going to be reading a lot and I probably will read at least seven books while I'm away for the week because I will just read. I'll read by the pool, I'll read in bed, I'll read, I just read all the time when I'm on holiday. Um, so I expect to do one around the middle of the month and then probably one at the end. It's going to be nearer July when I do the second wrap up but I will do one. But that's it for now. Um, I hope to see you soon. Whatever you read, it doesn't matter whether it's Fifty Shades of Grey or Ulysses. Just enjoy reading. That's what I do. And it doesn't matter. Bye. See you soon.